Toku faithful and creatures of the night, I'm Easy Rider, and it's time for Toku Ween Monster Movie Fest. I went over Garo Season 1. I also mentioned that there were several more movies and series in this franchise, and we had not seen the last of the Makai Knights. And tonight, I aims to keep that promise. This is Garo Red Requiem. This movie serves as a sequel to the 2005 series and continues the story of Koga Saijima. It took director Keita Amami a five years to make this movie, but that just means he didn't want to rush it. And no, Rei, Kaoru, and Mark Musashi do not come back for this, but I'm sure this movie will be no less off for it. Before we get to that, though, there's something I want to do. Since the name of the game this month is Scary Movies, I want to take a page out of my idol Joe Bob Briggs book and do the drive-in totals for each movie I watch. So let's look at those now. We have 8 Dead Bodies, 10 Breasts, we won't be showing those sadly, 1 Rave, 9 Fight Scenes, 1 Talking Ring, Two Garo Transformations, Evil Baby, Exploding Flesh, Monster Hacking, Impalement, Mind Control, Window Smashing, Wall Smashing, CGI Mini Dragon, Laser Blasting Robot, Gratuitous Flashbacks, Gratuitous Green Flame, Gratuitous Flute Playing, Gratuitous CGI Tentacles, Gratuitous CGI Sparkles, Gratuitous Makai Priest Spellcasting, Kung Fu, Wire Fu, Sword Fu, Mirror Fu, Paintbrush Fu. Check it out, and I will be here. Hey, it's a Rorschach test. That's a devil that... Oh wait, I already did this joke, never mind. So for those of you who came in late, our old buddy Zaraba, who may or may not be voiced by the guy who sings those DBZ and Super Sentai themes you like, brings us up to speed on what the horrors are. We start off with two shady characters entering an even shadier nightclub. They mention someone named Karma. I hope they're not talking about her. Oh man, if she joins up with the horrors, then we're screwed. Mirror, mirror on the wall, hold it in your hands and kill them all. Then we get some opening credits that seem more suited to another man who's licensed to kill. Da -da -da -da! Well, no, uh, maybe not. We then see the man who put the knight in Makai Knight, Koga Deathstalker Saijima. We learn from Zaruba that he's visiting a town he hasn't been to in years, and he's assigned to hunt down a horror that's been stalking it. He then asks Zaruba to sense it. I hope all of you saw Garo Season 1, or at least my review of it beforehand, because I'm not going over all this again. Everybody got that? Good! We then cut to Time Green stalking a woman with a baby carriage. She goes to get help from... Wait, is that... You again?! Don't you have anything better to do than to get in the hero's way, old man? Actually, this time it seems he's not being evil for once. Let's see how long that lasts. These two are also chasing horrors, but can't seem to get the job done. Even with their tiny chicken walker from Star Wars. They're gonna need some help. Whew. Uh, I uh, had a clip for this. Stop. My penis can only get so erect. No, the other clip. I love the kind of woman that can kick my ass. <laughs> Shoot 
So after some strangely arousing fighting and some impressive CGI, this ghost is toast. Whoa, Nemo from Finding Nemo became a badass. Apparently, Rekka just got here, and the others go to check on the baby. Unfortunately, it's Rosemary's baby. Huh? Toro, Toro, Ole! <laughs> Time to go for the goal. And eventually, Koga slices him up like the badass we all know he is. The old man is a Makai priest. His name is Akaza. He guards this area with his apprentice Shiguto. Zaraba info dumps that the horror they're looking for lives in mirrors and will eat anyone who looks into it. Rekka, who is a Makai priestess, says that she wants karma first, but Koga tells her that he's been assigned to kill it. Anyway, Rekka swears to kill it before he can, so she takes off. Interesting character, this Rekka. But what, pray tell, is her motivation for fighting? Don't say revenge. Don't say revenge. Don't say revenge. Uh, revenge? That's it, I'm out of here. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the bar, the minions named Kurtz and Shion are fishing for more victims for karma. You know, uh, John Lennon said, sirs, instant karma's gonna get you, but now you can get instant karma. Karma, who looks like the missing sister of Nye and Mare, devours the girl. Zaroba unfortunately loses the scent of the horror, so they call it a night. We then cut to the next day, and Rekka is playing her flute. <laughs> <sighs> you try to be nice to someone. See, it's crap like this that makes us antisocial. Koga asks her what we can already guess. Why does she hunt horrors? She says that she became a Makai priestess to hunt down horrors, but the job of killing them goes to Makai knights, not priests. <laughs> それはお前たちが勝手に作ったルールだ。最初にホラーと戦っていたのは我ら魔界法師だ。その法師たちの手に負えなくなったから、魔界騎士が誕生したんだろう。ザルバ、武器になるな。騎士だろうが法師だろう
言うだけのことはある見事な攻撃の方だだが守りの方は未熟だ守りの方など学ぶ必要はない敵を倒せばいいことだナイススクルードライバーコーガ shows her that she's not ready for karma and easily defeats her she takes it rather well Jeez, Koga, don't go all ray on us here. Hasn't there been enough female abuse in Garo? I mean, seriously. What was that? Did you see that? Did you. Forget it. Meanwhile, the minions prepare another meal for Karma. Luckily, Koga is nearby and Zaruba gets the scent. They make a break for it and get away with some action flips. Then we cut to. Suddenly, I love this movie. Focus, man, focus! Lining up some mirror fodder here for Karma. Her death is so brutal that Koga can actually hear the scream. They find the nightclub and with it a magical barrier that keeps them out. But wait, Rekka shows up and says that only a Makai priest can make something like this. We have a traitor in our midst. I wonder who it could be! As if in response, Akaza is having flashbacks to a lost family while looking in a mirror. Subtle movie. Meanwhile, at the club, both Koga and Rekka are hit on by the regulars. Later, they enter a rave, or an orgy, probably both. Seriously, can't they play some good music up in here? Like this? So they show Rekka to the mirror, and here's something we didn't see coming. It's revealed that her father was a Makai knight. What a twist! Luckily, Koga shows up to snap her out of it. Ooh, a broken mirror, seven years bad l- or not. Shion gets away with the mirror, and Rekka chases her, while Koga fights Kurtz in the club. Kurtz turns into his horror form and he uses the mirrors to mind control the regulars to attack Koga. He tries to summon his armor, but they trap it in the mirror. Koga tries to save Rekka when she almost gets eaten, and he gets impaled for his troubles. But he takes it like a true badass and keeps fighting. Luckily, they're rescued by Akaza and a horde of fake ninjas. Rekka immediately knows that there's a traitor among them. And for the sake of not dragging it out, Akaza straight up admits it. Oh my, what are you doing? Later they tend to his wounds and we get another flashback to Chibi Koga. My god, Highlander didn't have this many flashbacks. Hmm, I'm gonna go on a limb here and say that that's Rekka's father training Koga. Can I call them or can I call them? May I ask why? Hey, don't ignore me! I asked a legitimate question! Why can't women be Makai Knights? There's a simple explanation for that. God damn it, Gosei! After Koga wakes up, Rekka says she blames herself for letting his armor getting stolen. But Koga gives her an inspiring speech then falls back down. 
We then cut to Karma, who's using her dragon's breath to fill the building with darkness because... Um... Evil? Koga later confronts Akaza about his heel turn. And he laments that he just wanted to see his family again. He made a Faustian deal with Karma just to see his family one more time. Rekka offers to help Koga, who plans to use the Demon Sword to retrieve his armor and stop Karma once and for all. Shiguto is worried that they can't do it by themselves and they need some help. Akaza shows up to help as well, wanting to redeem himself for his betrayal. Good for him. The four of them enter the evil building and decide to do what no one should ever do in a monster movie, split up. Shiguto and Akaza work on sealing the exit so none of this evil can escape. Rekka finds Shion and her evil mummy henchmen. Luckily, Shiguto brought his chicken walker with him to deal with the grunts, while Akaza deals with the ghost of Raggedy Ann here. Rekka defeats her opponent with... a shampoo commercial. Koga fights Kurtz and gets thrown out of a window. But is saved by his physics-defying sword. Shion dies in Kurtz's arms and we see a flashback of who they really were. I won't spoil it, but it's kind of tragic actually how Karma manipulated these two. Rekka finds the mirror and by extension Karma. Koga tries to rush into the mirror, but Kurtz gets in the way. Rekka throws the handle into the mirror, opening the door for Koga. He jumps in, but Kurtz follows, and so does Rekka. to kill Karma, but she stops him. Then Rekka falls into... a screensaver. Oh crap, we entered hell, it finally happened. Garo summons his trusty steed Goten, and I'm getting the strangest case of deja vu here. Rekka and Akaza want to help, but they can't. Oh look, Garo's fighting a giant naked chick that looks like an undead Lady Gaga. What? I don't have to watch it. It has action and nostalgia because I've seen it already. Akaza appears somehow to Rekka to give her her flute. He tells her to play it to help Koga. Well, somehow the song reaches the souls of the Makai warriors that Karma has taken. Rekka sees her father and they have a touching moment before they all combine to give Garo the edge. They escape and they find the body of Akaza, who made a noble sacrifice to save them all. Akaza <laughs> 
そうだよなこうがそうなんだよなあ,あ奉仕が守ったのはたくさんの人たちの未来だ Well, they mourn the loss of their friend, and Zaraba basically pops up to say that the battle with the horrors is not over. God willing, we'll all meet again in Garo Season 2. The search for more boobies. I mean, whores. I mean, horrors! <coughs> What is wrong with me? Who's was that? So Rekka decides to stay with Shiguto and Koga takes his leave. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of him or this Makai priestess. And that was Garo Red Requiem. Well, time for pros and cons. Rekka steals the movie. This is her story more than anything. While Koga is the big hero of the movie, the story is Rekka's reckoning. Karma did kill her father, so she was angry and headstrong about it. Cliche as that is, though, she's the one, not Koga, who has something to prove. And in the end, she was the one with the ability to help Garo defeat Karma. Part of me wishes this movie was all about her, but she needed that extra push from Koga to be better. Besides, who's not for more girl power in Tokusatsu? Minor nitpick, but the final battle seems way too similar to the final battle in the series. While the story behind it is better, the ending battle leaves a bit to be desired. That and Karma looks a lot like Messiah. The other Messiah. Fun fact, Karma's actually voiced by Mika Hiji. This film was originally made for 3D, and the CGI in this film is fantastic. I can only imagine how good this looked on the big screen in theaters in Japan. Not just Karma or the horrors, but Rekka's spells look amazing. It's a visual feast for the eyes. Akaza. Yes, he did betray the heroes, but he redeemed himself. My problem is they make it a bit too obvious, given that Yosuke Saito has played antagonist roles before. But we can sympathize with him. He just wanted to see his family again. People are weak, and we'd probably make a Faustian deal for something, too. Everyone has a price. They could have thrown in a red herring to make it look like Shiguto was the traitor. I don't know, in the end, this is conflicting. Final analysis? I give it a B. It's a good movie. Once again, Keita Amamiya does for Tokusatsu what Stanley Kubrick did for American cinema. The CGI is amazing, the story, while slightly cliche at times, is likable, and the fight scenes are superb. Makoto Yokoyama returns from the series to direct the impressive fight scenes, and they alone are worth watching. This movie both stands on its own as something you can watch without having to see the series first, but also serves as an excellent follow up to the series. It paved the way for the cornucopia of new Garo movies, series, and side stories that would follow, so definitely check this one out. Well, that's all for now, but we're far from done. Come back next time, and we'll be getting a visit from an old friend. Until the next time. Um, sorry, folks. I'm a, a little jumpy this time of year. You know, scary stuff. And I'm just seeing things that may not be there. <laughs> well, until the next time, I'm Easy Rider reminding you that the fan sub will never die. See you next time.
you're not weird. We got balloons and paper plates, party favors, ice cream cake, turtlenecks and circle frames. One eye sitting behind my bangs. Got black jeans, I got Doc Martin skin that's thick and a heart that's hard. And lives have ended, party started. Pocket full of pencils, let's get arty. No big whoop, ain't no thing. Dance pants on in a disco brain. I feel no pain, got no nerve endings. Now check the e-bike that I'm sending. I'm gonna have myself an emo. ちゃんが生意気なものだからな。なんだと。俺は女に生まれた。だから騎士になれなかった。ただそれだけのことだ。<笑>